Hi, I'm Lindsay from Cosec Kadari Securities, and today I'll be discussing cash flow. It's one of the key fundamental metrics utilized by Cosec as part of our evidence-based investment strategy, and it's crucial for assessing the health and viability of a business. As always, all information given is general in nature and does not take into account your personal needs or objectives. For further information, visit our website, www.cosec.com.au. So today, we'll provide an overview of this financial metric, We'll then explain the different types of cash flow, and finally discuss why it's important to equity investors and provide some practical examples from companies listed on the ASX. As mentioned, cash flows are crucial for assessing the health and viability of a business and are therefore a crucial consideration for equity investors. As the name suggests, it measures the net amount of cash and cash equivalents being transferred in and out of a business. At the most fundamental level, a company's ability to create value for its shareholders is determined by its ability to generate positive cash flows. So what are the different types of cash flow? A company's cash flows can be broken down into three types. Operating cash flows, comprised of cash generated by its main business activities. Investing cash flows, comprised of its purchases of longer term capital assets, as well as its investments in other business ventures. And financing cash flows, comprised of proceeds from and outflows due to debt and equity issuances. So why is cash flow important? In short, understanding a company's cash flows is essential for assessing a company's liquidity, flexibility, and overall financial performance. In other words, it's crucial for assessing the health and viability of a business. Even though earnings are arguably the most scrutinized figure in a company's financial statements, to some extent, they're an accounting construct that's comprised of some non-cash components. In other words, several accounting items will affect earnings but not cash flow. For instance, depreciation of a company's assets are certainly relevant as they provide a realistic picture of the decreasing value of a company's assets. However, depreciation expense is a non-cash item and thus won't affect the company's ability to reinvest in the business or pay out dividends or distributions to its shareholders. Conversely, accounts receivable are certainly relevant as they reflect genuine sales that will eventually be reflected in a company's cash flow statement. However, until payment is actually received, this is also a non-cash item and thus won't assist the company in servicing its debt or paying its taxes. This potential divergence between cash flow and earnings can be demonstrated with a couple of examples from the ASX. On the one hand, Iron Ore Miner Fortescue Metals Group displays relatively clean pass-through of earnings to cash flow. We can see that the two figures have moved broadly in tandem over the past five years. In contrast, Contractor Simic Group has relatively high levels of working capital, such as receivables and inventory. As a result, its cash flow and earnings display a less predictable relationship to each other than in the case of Fortescue. So again, why are cash flows and values so intricately linked? In a nutshell, when a company generates positive cash flow, it can then reinvest in the company's growth or pay out dividends or distributions to its shareholders. Alternatively, those funds can also act as a buffer against future financial challenges. The importance of cash flows is further demonstrated by the discounted cash flow or DCF valuation method, which forms the basis of financial models used for valuing investments or financial assets. Quite simply, DCF determines the value of an investment today based on the projections of its future cash flows. One practical application of this that most of you will be familiar with is the institutional valuations or target prices found in the broker research reports. In summary, a company's ability to create value for its shareholders can be directly equated to its ability to generate positive long-term free cash flows. So in this video, we provided an overview of the financial metric cash flow. We explained the different types of cash flow and also discussed why it's important to equity investors and provided some practical examples from companies listed on the ASX. So I hope you found it helpful. This video is brought to you by Coastate Kadari Securities.